On this episode of the Journey to the Baja 1000, we fit the steering into the Jeep J10. You're watching the Journey to the Baja 1000. The most important part of this project and what I see is like one of the most difficult parts of any project is to figure out the order in which things go together. Uh, what things need to be built before the other such that you don't have interference problems later on. And what I broke that down to on this project, it's, it's really got to be the steering. I do have the engine mounted in the cradle and that's kind of a fixed dimension. But to really figure out where the engine and everything else goes forward and aft and maybe even left and right in the car. It really has to be the steering because the one the steering I'm doing is kind of unique, so I need to make sure it fits inside the body and it also can locate locate the tires uh, in the wheel well. So let's take a look at what I'm doing with that. So what I have here is uh, this perimeter, which is going to be what holds the steering slider uh, in place. Just a kind of an illustration of what that is. I'll be printing out uh, our plasma cutting two of these plates, and it's out of 316 still. And then around the perimeter, all the way around, I'll be running two inch uh, round tube uh, around the entire perimeter of this. And then coming off the top will be another tube, which is gonna locate the upper suspension. And then obviously the lower suspension comes by this four by four uh, square tube on the bottom. Why is this one all open in the, the center? Well, there's two of them. There'll be one plate in the back, and then this one is actually the front plate. And the reason that it's open in the center is because this is the slider that has to go inside there and you need to be able to you know mount it which will go through these three quarter inch holes but once it's done once I, if i need to do any maintenance on it i need to be able to take it off so i need to be able to rotate it slide it out and then pull this thing out and that's why the front one will be open now the rear one will be a little bit different i will actually uh, put some kind of a uh, support in in that one such that there is a little bit more support for uh, for this thing. So right now what I'm gonna do is just take the first dimension and this is the most important one as I see it uh, because this dimension locates everything else. It locates where the engine is actually gonna go in the car and then it eventually goes all the way to the back suspension is how long the rear suspension is gonna be. So this to me is one of the most important uh, dimensions. So even though this is the front plate, the rear plate is gonna be the exact same dimensions across the bottom and across the top. So I'm gonna use this just to locate it uh, everything to make sure I got in the right place. It's got to be square and since this is the the closest part to the engine I'm really just looking for minimum clearance. I'm gonna go for a quarter inch clearance from the uh, the face of the engine or the most leading edge of the engine which ends up being the uh, the water pump. So I put that there. I'm gonna mark this and now that I've got that mark on the square tube. Now I know exactly where I'm gonna put two inch holes through that square tube such that the two inch round tube can flow all the way through there. Let me just show you kind of my concept here for how this whole thing is gonna to go together. Like I said, I've got this inch and a half square tube, which is gonna mount right here across the center and it'll be clearance by a half inch above the, um, above the square tube. And then sliding over that square tube, I have what I call the shuttle. And this thing's gonna be sitting right in the middle. And to make the steering work, I need to have it be able to slide three and a half inches both ways. And that'll put it just slightly beyond where the stops will be so that I don't run into the steering stop based on the geometry here, but I actually will have to put steering stops in to mechanically do that. So these rod ends will go out to the, uh, the spindles and then this thing will slide back and forth. And the way that this thing slides back and forth is with the stock GM steering box, which will be mounted just like this. And as I turn the, the steering shaft, then it turns the pitman arm, which in, which in turn slides that steering box back and forth. And now you can see where that top suspension arm, uh, that top suspension support, uh, support is gonna come across the center and actually mount uh, to what I call the mount for the steering box. So trying as best I can to integrate it all together. Once we get it together, we'll see how well it works, obviously. There is a lot of stresses going on in this part. So we're doing our best to just tie them together such that as they push and pull against each other, they're actually pushing and pulling against something that is rigid. And I don't get a lot of movement in the, uh, the frame and the suspension in the front. So that's where we're going with this. So drilling two inch 
holes through this four inch square tube. Proved to be pretty tricky because the four inch square tube wouldn't fit in the beast. So I'm using my drill press and also what is called a hold down clamping set. They're about $55 on Amazon. I put them in the description below. Really cool thing and very versatile for just about anything you need to hold down to all kinds of different things. One of the things I've really enjoyed about this project is the opportunity to learn CAD better. And I'm using Fusion 360. In this case, I've mocked up the steering um, such that I can figure out the Ackerman angle. And what I found is that the difference between these two lines here is about 14 degrees. And I'll use that in the rest of the calculations. Specifically, as I go into building the steering shuttle. What that translates to is that the steering rods need to sit about 1.4 inches outside the lower mounts of the suspension. So that makes this bar from center to center about 9.4 inches. And these are the plates that I'll weld onto the shuttle to hold the mounts for the rod ends for the steering. Um, another thing I like about the using the CAD and then also in conjunction with a plasma table is I can nest all these things as best I can together such that I have very little waste from the sheet metal that I'm using, which is pretty expensive. I've also made the, uh, the pitman arm on this, and you can see uh, six inches from center to center on these and just some bracing bars I've made, and I'll cut those things uh, out. And then finally, the part that holds them all together, uh, this perimeter uh, thing here, the, uh, the steering slider will go between these two holes. I've cut these reliefs out such that water can flow out. Uh, it won't get trapped inside the, uh, the bar. And then also I've used the, this extra material, which would normally be wasted. I'm using that to cut out the lower suspension mounts. Now I'm marking up the slider and I'm going to use a one and a quarter inch hole saw to cut through both ends of the uh, the slider. And I was going through my supply, I only had one of these things, I was trying to make it last, and I completely smoked this blade. It ends up cutting all the way through, but I think with one tooth left. But it does the job, I gotta get another one before I cut another hole. So sometimes cutting with a bandsaw doesn't always give you the perfect 90 degree edge. It does a pretty good job, but it isn't perfect. And for things that I want a perfect 90 degree edge, what I will do is I'll use my uh, disc sander to face it. So I'm just using a piece of angle iron. I'm making it 90 degrees from the sanding face. And then once I start sanding, I rotate the piece around and you can see I can get a perfect 90 degree edge uh, for the part. So here's one of the challenges that I had. I'm using this slider for the steering, and this slider is going to go over this two, one and a half inch square tube. The problem is, is that this slider is made of, out of two inch square tube, and it's got a welded seam on the inside. So I got to find a way to grind that down such that it sm slides smoothly over this one and a half inch uh, square tube. You really can't get sandpaper in there. I don't know what kind of tool you could use. So what I made up was I took an old uh, file that I had and I tack welded a piece of sawzall blade to it. I chuck that up in my uh, sawzall, and then now when I hit the uh, the button, I get I get the, rat, the the file moving back and forth. I'm taking the slider, chucking it to one of my welding tables, and then I take a uh, shop rag and an old bar that isn't uh, used for anything else. I slide the file into the square tube, and then I stick the bar with the shop rag over top of the uh, over top of the file and as I pull up on the bar it puts pressure down in the center of the square tube I'm able to take out that welded seam if I just by using the uh, the sawzall
one of the biggest threats I think to the steering system is getting any kind of dirt or grime inside the slider in, in between the shuttle. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting some grease fittings uh, on the slider. I'm going to put them all the way around. I can't put them on the bottom, but my plan is to put as much grease inside this thing and then also covered by boots that you would use like on the suspension for a motorcycle. Put as much grease as I possibly can in there such that dirt can't get in between those two bars uh, and it'll just slide smoothly back and forth. So here's one of the parts I'm going to have to make. You can see that, uh, so the pitman arm, it goes from uh, this pivot point through a, a, a rod in, and it's going to go through a really short rod, and then this is going to mount onto the shuttle. And as you can see, there is just not a lot of clearance in there for that to mount in there. So what I'm about to go do is I'm actually going to cut these bungs down just to the length of the rod, and it might even take a little bit off of the rod in because this, uh, the the one and a half inch tube that's gonna go in between there is gonna be super short such that everything just fits inside here. And that this bolt, I'm just looking to make sure that it clears this rod in right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get on that right now. So this bung is just a little bit too short to chuck up in the saw and cut up. There's no way to really chuck that in the saw. So what I'm gonna use is just a piece of the, uh, the one and a half inch tube that I plan on using as my tie rods. I got a lot of extra of this. So I slide that in there and I drilled a, a small hole there and I'm gonna just put a quick rosette weld in there. I do want to protect the bearing, so I'm going to cover it up with an old uh, glove so that it doesn't get any spatter while I, uh, while I weld. And I'm just going to use my MIG welder to uh, drop a quick weld in there, and that should hold that bung in place when I run it through my bandsaw so it doesn't spin in there. Okay, for this cut, I plan on using my, uh, my bandsaw. Um, I'm a, I will be doing a tool tips on band saws and band saws that I have and I will never waste another dollar on another circular saw after having a band saw and just the stuff that I cut. So I got a couple of videos of really cool stuff that I cut with this band saw and you're going to be blown away. As you can see I'm cutting this uh, thing down I'm basically give myself one inch of bung inside the weld uh, on both sides so that whole tube is going to be two inches long. I did consider just um, welding the ends of the bungs together but after after thinking about it, I think it'll be just it'll be stronger and a better weld if I just use the uh, the two inches of one and a half inch round tube. So we'll start with that. You'll see this thing will go through this pretty quick. It's almost solid steel all the way through, and it's going to cut straight through it like butter. I'll put a link in my description on where I got this saw, so you can take a look at it on Amazon. But it was delivered right to my house, no problem. Really nice cut right through there. Well, there's the stubby rod in. Let's go and see if she fits. All right, here's a quick look at how everything's gonna go together. I have the grill on here just because I needed to make sure that I was gonna have clearance with this uh, top bar here. And this is where the top suspension is gonna mount. And I wanted to bring that out as far as I possibly could inside the grill, such that I get my mounts for the suspension as far apart as I possibly can, giving it that much more rigidity. You also get a good idea of how the steering is gonna go together. Nothing here is uh, welded up, so there's a little bit of play in it, but at least you're gonna get an idea of how it's gonna turn. To turn the wheel, you see the pitman arm turning and pushing that shuttle back and forth. And then these rod ends right here are going to be going out to the individual wheels. Now it's time to take this thing apart, take it into the weld shop, and uh, get all the parts welded together. 
Okay, I've got the uh, slider tack welded in here. Uh, it's looking good. It's just about ready to go for the uh, the finish weld and really get that thing braced in. But I think it's working perfect just the way that I hoped it would. And I think once that thing greases up, it's just going to slide like butter through there. I think the pitman arm is looking killer in black. I really like the way that thing came out. It's looking pretty good. Uh, while I have welding to do to get the rest of the steering enclosure and the upper suspension mounts ready to go, I am going to take this opportunity right now to weld in the brackets that I'm going to use to locate the lower suspension arms. This is just the best time to do it. Later on, I'll have a whole bunch of stuff all around this, um, and it'll just be difficult to weld. But right now, it's going to be super easy to get in here with my TIG welder and put some good welds down. So I'm going to take that opportunity. And, uh, and get to those welds while I have this thing that I can flip upside down and just get the best angles on that weld. Okay, here's a look at the almost completed steering system. I'm gonna end this video uh, on this. You can see I got the top tube uh, located. It is tack welded to this uh, crossbar here. The plates are in there. Nothing's welded up on that yet. Pretty much most of the shuttle is uh, welded up and you can see that with very little play, that thing's gonna be really tight. I think it's gonna move nicely. I uh, just have to kind of protect that thing from getting any kind of dirt in there and I'll be using that, those boots to do that. Um, so everything's going together just like I wanted it to. There was one issue I ran into and that was the, uh, the pitman arm. I used this brace here to uh, strengthen the pitman arm just a little bit more because uh, I really figured the stress concentration that will hit its maximum point right around here around the pitman arm. I continue this brace up too far though. And as you can see, I'm running into problems where it's interfering with this rod. And I'll go ahead and I'll take off probably from here four, I'll probably take that whole thing off and maybe run a little brace on the inside there to give myself some more room and clearance from uh, that rod in. And you can see I already got the suspension mount uh, on there, good to go. Uh, just a little bit more bracing and a whole bunch of welding left to do. But uh, all in all, I'm really happy with the way this thing's going together. All right, we're gonna leave the steering system right there where it is. You can see I still have some welding to do, everything's tacked up, but you get a good idea of how the steering system is gonna work. I think it's gonna be pretty cool. With that, the next video is gonna be the CNC plasma table. I'll show you me putting it together and putting it to, to use. Which I think a lot of guys will be really interested in. We're gonna be on vacation, so I'll be taking those videos from the road. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourself. You can see most of my teardown of this truck if you watch episode one. What I wanted to talk briefly about was just some safety considerations. Using a high speed disc like this, those things come apart and they will hurt you bad. So I have double eye protection, I got ear protection, I'm wearing a respirator and I covered up my arms, hands, legs, and feet just to ensure that that thing comes apart, it doesn't end up penetrating any kind of skin. Thanks again for joining us on this episode. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care of yourself.